Polygamy, a Greek and Latin hybrid, poly meaning many and gamia meaning marriage, is a form of marriage in which a person has more than one spouse. In about 2008, as the Netzerim faith was finding its feet, and some could argue that it's still finding its feet, but good things take time, that is the offshoot sect of normative Second Temple era Judaism, the faith that Rav Shaul, otherwise known as the Apostle Paul, was accused of being a ringleader of, became ignited by the subject of polygamy. With a prominent messianic leader at the time stirring the pot, the movement quickly became divided. Groups began springing up, teaching it as an option for a believer while others forbid it and ego became the ruler of the day. In time, other leaders joined in on this supposedly new revelation, and all this fuss sent shockwaves through the movement with the effects still being felt today with bitter divorces and family division, which ultimately did most damage to wives and children. It was like a wildfire that burnt through the camp. It was ugly and there is no telling how detrimental it would have been to new people wanting to follow a Hebrew interpretation of the Bible. Let me start by saying that the concept of polygamy is not encouraged, commanded or endorsed in the Bible whatsoever. The laws of the beautiful captive in Deuteronomy 21 verses 11 through 14 where a single or married soldier may retain a woman that he finds attractive for the duration of his military service and one month after returning home until he can take her as his wife is designed to mitigate rape and give the soldier time to come to his senses. The laws that immediately follow this in the Torah deal with a man having a disdain for his first wife and a love for the second sibling rivalry between the offspring of his two wives and the laws of the wayward son. This is Torah that is designed to provide provision and mitigation of sin. Most of the supposed laws in the Torah related to polygamy translated into English start with the word if. Deuteronomy 21.11a says, If you notice a beautiful woman and have desire for her. In Exodus 21.10a, if he marries another woman. Deuteronomy 21.15a, if a man has two wives. This means that the essence of these laws is based on a conditional clause. Indeed, the Hebrew in each of these instances, though not using the equivalent word if, all uses language indicating yet, whether, or in the occasion of premise. But why does the Torah not outrightly forbid it like other courses of action such as stealing or murder? This seems to be the net that catches a lot of people. The answer is that in exceedingly rare situations, it is permissible. Such rare situations include a population who has been decimated by war and the females far outnumber the remaining male population. Obviously, in modern times, this would be a lot less of an issue due to the ease that people can travel a great distance. Such a situation would put many females at a distinct disadvantage in having children. Another situation is when a married woman is found out to be barren. In this case, especially in ancient times, if the wife agrees, the man may take a second wife and have offspring through her. But this is only if the first wife insists. If she does not, he may divorce her and remarry. Society back then had little to no provision for divorced women. They would normally return to their father's house indefinitely. So polygamy occurred on occasion by the will of man in the case of war, famine, widowhood or female infertility. This is why the Torah doesn't outrightly forbid it. This doesn't mean that we are commanded to do it or given the option if it arises in our minds. All instances of polygamy in the Bible are intertwined with calamity and often end in disaster. Whether strife between competing wives, as was the case with Hannah and Penina, or between rival half-siblings with Yaakov's and David Hamelik's sons. In fact, Lovin's wife switch led to an almost extinguishing of the nation's progenitors, with Yaakov favoring Yosef over his eldest son Reuven, which if it wasn't due to Yosef's righteous conduct during his incarceration, would have led to a complete breakdown of the nation of Israel before they even emerged as a people. Yehuda would have gone off the rails and had no chance to prove himself by offering his life in place of Benjamin's without Yosef's plan to see if his betraying brothers regretted their cruel act. Polygamy is the source of many of David Hamelik's troubles with his children from different wives causing so much strife that eventually one of them, Absalom, tried to overthrow and kill his father. Ultimately, David did tshuva for unnecessarily indulging in this act as it is recorded in 2 Samuel 20 and 3 where it says, when David returned to his palace in Jerusalem, he took the ten concubines he had left to take care of the palace and put them in a house under guard. He provided for them but did not lie with them. 
They were kept in confinement till the day of their death, living as widows. The truth is that polygamy is the source of one of the greatest catastrophes that has ever happened to the nation of Israel. It was a major undoing of the most wisest man who ever lived, Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon. The original paradigm of marriage in the Torah is between one husband and one wife. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Hashem then says, Be fruitful and multiply. So life is to be perpetuated by children from two parents who have become one. Time has shown me that people who support and encourage polygamous relationships are nearly all propagated by people who want to partake of it themselves. This should be enough to show the true motive behind the propagation of this act. Many of these people are existing leaders, which scripture directly forbids to partake of this act anyway. 1 Timothy 3, 2. Now the overseer must be above reproach, a husband of but one wife, temperament, self-controlled, respected, hospitable, and able to teach. And in Titus 1, 6, an elder must be blameless, the husband of but one wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. And 1 Timothy 3.12 a Shamashim, that is a deacon, must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children and his household well. On top of this, a teacher or leader needs to lead by example and taking any liberties that might appear muddied only lessens the effectiveness of his mission. In 1 Corinthians 8, 9, it says, Take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak.